Hey guys, welcome to another maths tutorial by the Magic Monk. Today we're going to talk about the proof behind the chain rule. So as you know, uh, the chain rule works on equations where we have a function embedded within another function. So let's say we have y equals bracket x plus 2 uh, or x plus 3 squared. Now I can rewrite this as y equals u squared where u is equal to x plus 3. So what this means is instead of having one function I now have two functions and the output of my second function u uh, is the input of my first function. All right. So basically we input a number into x and then the output is u and then the output from u goes into the input of y and then whatever y is is the output okay so let's make a table of values that will show you this process so let's make up a number a very simple number for x and let's say x is equal to uh, 0 okay now if we put 0 into x what happens is 0 plus 3 is 3 so u becomes 3 and then that 3 goes into the input of this first function so 3 squared is 9 now let's try another number let's put in 1 for x 1 plus 3 is 4, so u is 4, 4 squared is 16. So this is our table of values. Okay, now let's uh, talk about how the chain rule works. If you remember the equation for gradient, the gradient of an equation is change in y over change in x. Okay, so which is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Now let's have a look at our first equation. We have y equals x plus 3 squared. Now what is the gradient of this equation? Well we have change in y over change in x. So we have y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 y2 in this case is uh, 16 y1 in this case is 9 uh, so x2 in this case is 1 x1 in this case is 0 so that is equal to uh, 7 minus 1, 7 over 1, which is 7. Okay, now let's look at our second equation. We have y equals u squared. So the gradient is equal to change in the vertical axis over change in the horizontal axis. Change in y over change in u. So therefore we have 16 minus 9 over 4 minus 3 because changing u, u is 4 on the second point, 3 on the first point, so then it's 7 over 1, so it's still 7. Now let's look at our third equation, u is equal to x plus 3, m is equal to, the gradient of this equation is equal to change in u over change in x. So therefore we have 4 minus 3 over 1 minus 0, so it's 1 over 1, so it's 1. Now, you probably would notice that change in y over change in x is equal to change in y over change in u times change in u over change in x. Right? This works algebraically as well, but I'll just show you the 
numerical part, we have 7 equals changing y over changing u is 7, changing u over changing x is 1, so therefore this works. So the gradient of y, uh, the rate of change of y with respect to x is the same thing as the rate of change of y with respect to u times the rate of change of u with respect to x. Right, but this still is not the same as the chain rule because the chain rule states that the chain rule states that um, dy over du sorry dy over dx is equal to uh, dy over du times du over dx so how is this how is this the same as this well firstly let's remind us let's remind you that dy over dx is the same as changing y over changing x but with the limit as x as changing x approaches zero so I'm gonna do the limit I'm gonna take the limit of both sides here so I'm gonna have limit as changing x approaches zero of changing y over changing x equals so I've taken the limit of the left hand side I'm gonna do the limit on the right hand side limit as changing x approaches zero of changing y over changing u times changing u over changing x now one of the rules one of the limit laws is that if you have a limit of a product you can actually turn it into um, the product of two limits so then this becomes limit as changing x approaches zero of changing y over changing x equals and this becomes limit as changing x approaches zero of changing y over changing u times limit as changing x approaches zero of changing u over changing x All right, so I've separated this limit into two limits now the last concept you need to understand is as changing x approaches zero changing u also approaches zero so how does that work well if you have a look at our equation u equals x plus three right u is a function of x so if changing x is very little or for example if x does not change then u is also not going to change or if the change in x is very small then u is also going to change by a very small amount so that's why as x as change in x approaches zero change in u also approaches zero so I can rewrite this equation as limit as change in x approaches zero of changing y over changing x equals limit now I'm gonna change this delta x and I'm gonna write change in u approaches zero of changing y over changing u times limit as changing x approaches zero of changing y over changing x and now we can rewrite this back into our uh, calculus uh, symbol where dy over dx is equal to dy over du times du over dx okay so hopefully uh, oops just made a small mistake here this should say u not y okay so hopefully you guys have a better understanding of uh, how this works 
and uh, you don't really need to understand this uh, in order to use the chain rule but I guess it kind of helps you guys to see where the chain rule comes from okay see you all next